Hi, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at TensorBoard. And uh, yeah, so let's get started with it. All right, so what I have over here is a, uh, a script where I'm going to be looking at MNIST uh, fashion. So not the MNIST data set that you're probably used to. Uh, we're looking at a bit harder data set. Um, and yeah, and so uh, TensorFlow has TensorBoard to visualize your loss functions, things like that. But um, not many tutorials talk about the, the projector uh, inside, uh, inside TensorFlow, right? So we're going to be looking at the projector to look at embeddings, especially, right? So embeddings, uh, pictures, and so on. All right, so, um, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, reading in this labels.tsv file, which tells you what each label corresponds. So zero corresponds to t-shirt, uh, five onto sandals, and so on. Okay. Um, the, the data in itself, I downloaded using this uh, shell script. Uh, so like it, it's, it's all dockerized for you, so you can play around with it later if you, want, if you need. And this part over here, um, don't worry about it too much because I'm literally copying and pasting from the official MNIST fashion uh, site on how to read in the data. Okay, so now with, with TensorBoard, the, uh, you need to create a logs directory. Right? So uh, we, we're creating fr from the current directory, we're gonna be creating this logs thing, and we're gonna call it slash one to make it, to say this is our first iteration, okay? Um, but once we've done that, once we created our logs directory, there's, there's two things that we need to be doing. Um, the first thing is to create this metadata file. So the metadata file, what it's going to contain is, so we have 60,000 images. So for all the 60,000, I need to write in a row that will have the class, which is a number from zero to nine, and the corresponding name of it. Now, the name is not compulsory, but it usually helps, right? So. So as a, as a thumb rule, just, just keep to this convention, right? So write down the class uh, and a name of the class for, for each row. So, so, so that's what I'm doing over here. And then the second thing is this thing called a sprite image. Now, so we have 60,000 images. Let me just quickly show you what they look like. Um, so while this loads, um, yeah, so this is what it looks like, right? So we have a whole bunch of pictures of shoes, uh, shirts, and so on. Um, and the sprite, so this is the sprite.png thing that we need to create. Uh, it doesn't need to be called sprite.png, but it, what it has to be is a square image that contains all the, all the images that you're about to show, right? So um, now 60,000, like it's not a square number like nine or 16 and 25. So what's gonna happen is, um, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be taking the square root of uh, 60,000. Okay, so it's gonna be 244. So it's gonna be a 245 by 245 image. Okay, so, the, so each row will contain 245 images. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, this function over here, uh, which, uh, which I've used from, from someone else, uh, is creating exactly that image, right? So it's creating that square image, and for whatever's remaining, it's just gonna put zeros, okay? So if I go back to my picture, and I go to my last row, yeah, you'll see, you'll see a blank bit, right? So the, which means it's not filled, and that's fine. Uh, so, Anyway, coming back to this, there's, there's two things that you need to do. First is write the metadata file, and the second is to write the sprite uh, picture. Okay, so this is, this is just me showing the calculations on how I end up getting uh, the size of the image, which, turn, which turned out to be 6,860, uh, 8,860, because each image is a 28 by 28 image. Okay, so I, you need to factor that in as well. Anyway, so let's get back to TensorBoard. So with TensorBoard, um, now to get the TensorBoard working, I need to write those images into a, uh, into a TensorFlow variable, right? So that's what I'm doing over here, okay? So I'm calling it features, but keep in mind, um, TensorBoard is designed for embeddings, not images. So I'm reshaping it so that I flatten it out, right? So the first, uh, the first row is the number of images that I have. So the first uh, number in shapes. So I will have 60,000 images here. And this number, 
Um, I'll, I'll put it minus one because it, it says NumPy, go and calculate it yourself when you research things. But in, this, in our case, we'll end up with 784. Okay, so uh, it'll end up being a 60,000 by 784 uh, matrix. All right, so, so these are my embeddings now. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, so tf.train.saver, that's where you tell uh, TensorBoard to look at, look at this, uh, look, in our case, look at this variable. Right? So that's where we're going to be saving this. Um, you have to run the initializer because keep in mind all, all variables in this flow needs to be initialized even though you're sending in a constant number. Um, yeah, and then with, um, I'm telling you to save it into this checkpoint file. Right. Anyway, so the, the rest of it is fairly standard. So you tell it the metadata part, right? So where it is, and then you tell this the sprite image part. Um, now this, and then you tell the shape of the images, and then you go projected dot visualize embeddings, right? So this is really the key key thing. Now you don't have to really memorize any of these functions. All you all you really have to do is uh, pretty much copy and paste, right? Because it, even I got this from some other site, and I will link link that in in my in my. Uh, Git repo. Um, yeah, anyway, so once, that, once that's all done, all you have to do is go tensorboard uh, dash f log directory and the path of the log directory. Once you do that, we end up in this uh, nice visualization of the 60,000 images that we had. Um, now, it's a, so you can play around. So this is the principal component analysis projected on three, three dimensions, right? So remember, we, it was a 784 dimensional uh, space, and then we projected onto uh, three dimensions. Okay, so uh, one thing, one cool thing, that, thing you can do is you can color it, right? So you can color it by class. So when you look at it, you can see like the shoes are starting to, uh, ankle boots are starting to come in one place. So, and the other thing, other cool thing is once if you click on one of them, you can see what the nearest points are in that space. So ankle boots are really close to ankle boots. So let's look at t shirt. So t shirt. Uh, t-shirt slash top is close to shirts as well. So I'm assuming when this means shirts, they mean long sleeve shirts. So it's, uh, the point is this is an easy data set to deal with. Um, all right, so now the cool thing that we really want to do is use Tsni. Now this might take a while. Uh, so let me, let me talk what Tsni does. So Tsni is a bit more complicated than PCA. So PCA simply pushes the which is a high dimensional vector onto uh, a small dimensional vector. Um, but Tsni actually looks at the manifold. So what is a manifold? Um, so if I, if I have a shape, like a, a set of data points that's, that's like this, right? Um, let's, let's, let's curve it a bit. So a, a data point somewhere there, somewhere here, um, what Tsni does is it takes into account the fact that they're, they're, they're in this uh, surface rather than just saying this point is Euclidean distance is close, right? So it takes into account um, the fact that there's curvatures and stuff like that. Anyway, so, um, right, so let's, let's see. So it's learn, yeah, so you can set the learning rate. Uh, so it it's keep on, keeps on learning what the manifold looks like, right? Uh, when, you, when you project it on a three-dimensional space. Um, yeah, so that we can, see better yeah so we should always look at color right uh yeah here we go hopefully it starts showing yeah there we go right so yeah so the pants are starting to yeah so you can see the colors are separating much better than it did in pca which was one which was one big blob so yeah you can twist this around turn around and uh yeah so you can see this uh nice shape uh panning out and how it's separating out um, these classes. And by the way, so once you once you start to see some separation, you should really turn down your learning rate. Uh, so let me, um, yeah. So let me just pause it there. All right. So yeah, with Tsni, you get this nice, nice thing. And um, for, un unfortunately, for some reason, if I go back to PCA, this is going to start all over again. I'm not really sure how to freeze that and just come back to this thing. Uh, anyway, so you have, so you can see pullover. Yeah, so pullover, it is close to shirt rather than uh, pullover. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can see, you can see that similar, similar kind of clothes are in similar areas, right? 
and uh, yeah, so again, the ankle boots are in one place, which was which seemed to be the easy thing to classify, but it's doing a lot better than PCA. Okay, so you can see all these classes. Now, keep in mind, we're not doing any classification, right? So the uh, the the TSNI algorithm doesn't actually take into account class uh, class of the of the image that is sent, right? So yes, it, it happens to color it, but that's because I provided this metadata file, right? So it's not actually doing any classification. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to TensorFlow. You you can help play around with uh, the other stuff that's in there. So you, if you had a second second embedding to look at, it it will be it will be up here. Uh, you can you can make your dark mode and uh, you can select things and look at what's the closest point. So yeah, so there's, there's a bit a bit to play around with, but th those are the main things uh, about TensorFlow. So hopefully uh, that all made sense to you. Oh, and last thing before I go, now to uh, once you run once you run this thing, either in a, in a bash or in, in your um, terminal or on the Jupyter script in itself, you have to go to localhost uh, six double zero six. Okay, so I I I pretty much create the link over here going localhost six double zero six, but yeah, otherwise if you want to do it manually, that's what you do. But again, um, I'm going to be putting the Git repo in the comments below. Uh, please do uh, like, share it, and if you have any questions, uh, please do comment. But otherwise, thanks for watching.